Utopian Road to Hell, my latest book, is a book that in this particular election year, every single person that intends to go vote should read because they have to understand exactly what utopian thought is and how that utopian thought has crept into our society to the point of there being an actual opportunity, an actual chance for someone led by that kind of magic thought to become the president of the United States. Now the background of me writing this book goes back to my family. I was raised in a Marxist family. In 1960 my mother thought that uh, the Soviet Union was utopian itself. She believed in all of these concepts of the proletariat and uh, every medicine being free and this and that and the other thing and that the government could ration anything and everything. And our family actually attempted to defect to the Soviet Union in 1960s. When Gladnost came around while George H.W. Bush was in power, I wanted to go to the Soviet Union to see the nation that I almost lived in. Fortunately, in 1960, they told my mother to go back to America and work for the revolution there. So, you know, I didn't wind up there. But I wanted to see for myself. I got there, and what I saw of that utopia was immediately staggering. I know we'd like to give Ronald Reagan credit for destroying the Soviet Union and the evil empire, but the actual reality is the place had bankrupt itself. You can't sell bread for a nickel a loaf when it costs 50 cents a loaf to bake. You can't give people a ride on a subway for three cents a person when it costs $3.50 per person to run the subway. Eventually, it just doesn't work anymore. You can't repair things. You can't supply things. I got there. There were lines everywhere everywhere. Everybody, no matter what their job, no matter you know what they did, they carried a bag with them. Uh, whether it was tucked in a briefcase or tucked in a purse or whatever, in case there was a line somewhere to get in so that they could buy something because nothing is available. Everybody had money. People had plenty of money. There just wasn't anything to spend the money on because the prices were set so low that it was impossible to actually buy the goods. And I saw a country that was in despair, the ring road around Moscow, some of it was gravel and there were stoplights, some of which didn't even work. You go to the monuments and the grass wasn't cut. I was there toward the winter and the police booth at Red Square in front of the Kremlin, which is supposed to be enclosed for the police up there controlling things to, to remain warm, had broken windows. Uh, I, I mean, the, the country was in total despair. We had cell phones in Moscow. If you wanted to call out any, anywhere else in the country, you had to call an operator, give her the, the telephone number, and then maybe sometime that day or the next day they would call you back. This country had bankrupt itself. Uh, with this utopian philosophy, this utopian dream that we can supply all the needs of the people, all we need is a good central plan. And God's plan, which is the plan that works for rationing, everything is rationed. People don't understand that. I, I hear, uh, you know, some of the people in the Republican Party, including uh, conservatives and the presidential candidates, talk about, oh, we don't, we don't want rationing in the United States. We have rationing here. We have God's plan for rationing. It works this way. You work, you produce something, you get money or you make a good, and you trade it for something. And, and if you don't have anything to trade, you don't get anything back. That's rationing. We ration with money. If you don't have the money, you don't get it. In a utopian plan, the rationing is the government determining who is going to get what, not based on who is more productive. Their idea is from each according to their ability and to each according to their need. In other words, you have this great big barrel, which you know how well this worked for the settlers down in Jamestown. They froze to death and gave it up. Everybody works and throws everything into this giant barrel. It's just like a giant thing of soup, and everybody brings their vegetables, and everybody puts it in there, and then people come by with a ladle, and of course, they only take what they need. Uh, this is not humanity. Uh, this, this is not the animal kingdom. Tell the alpha wolf that's brought down the kill that he's going to give everybody else in the pack an equal amount of the meat off the deer. What are you, nuts? The alpha is going to get what he wants, then his mate's going to get what she wants, and then the others, depending on their size and strength, are going to get what's left. 
that is the reality of the animal kingdom. It's the reality of, of, of humanity. And all of these, these, these plans to be able to furnish uh, just uh, uh, an unending supply uh, to everyone, whether it is medicine or food or transportation, and that somehow this can be given to every single person regardless of cost, it is, can only be defined as magic think.